Continuing with uh, Android, uh, quick heads up. I'm going to show you how can one can develop an Android uh, mobile dApp or wallet in minutes. Um, OK. Uh, so Clemence should have uh, been presenting, uh, but she got all her ID stolen, and she couldn't board the plane. So I'm filling in. Um, so we, bar we both work for a bank, uh, uh, the second uh, bank in France, uh, which is uh, uh, not a classical bank. It's organized like a credit union where the, each customer has a share and uh, voting rights uh, to a regional bank. And the regional banks, they own the central, uh, uh, the central uh, uh, body. Um, we've done that as a side project of the, our main project, which is called Cash, uh, whose aim is to uh, enable every of our banking uh, customer to go on the blockchain. Uh, we are focused on mostly on identity and the key recovery. And once we've nailed uh, those two areas, we will uh, focus on uh, writing uh, Ethereum uh, banking application. Let's see. OK. Um, so this is really a side project. Um, how did it happen? Um, uh, first, we, we wanted to build, uh, to build prototypes, uh, mockups for the UI and UX experiment to get our ideas right before committing to, to a full coding. So, um, and um, um, our product owner was a, uh, is Cyril, he's uh, here, uh, was a specialist of uh, block language. So he wrote an open book, uh, open source book on uh, open uh, block SCAD, which is a, a computer edit design system using block programming. And so he made us aware of uh, block language design for Android. So we went that way. And then looking closer, uh, I realized that this thing was extensible. And so uh, why not write an Ethereum extension? So that's how it happened. Uh, so let's start with a demo of how it's working. Um, so, App Inventor is uh, um, a web ID. That is, you, you, you don't have to install anything on your machine. You just log in on the MIT server, and you've got two screens. Um, first screen is uh, uh, Interface Composer, very much like, um, very much like the what you get in the Android Studio. And you can switch to the programming. So you program with blocks, so you don't have any curly brackets or semicolon uh, error kind of stuff. Uh, everything clicks into place. And this is how you do your programming. This, is, this makes another screen appear with the name uh, history. So this is App Inventor. Who, who knew App Inventor? OK, some of you. OK, the other ones are real programmers. <laughs> OK, so you click Build, and then it downloads on 
your mobile device, and then you're, you're done. Application is starting, and you see the usual ECRM stuff, addresses, transactions, stuff like that. So, going back to... Uh... So if you want to do that, just create a login at this address, Train yourself uh, without ECRM. ECRM is not a standard component. And uh, after a while, you'll get your apps in, within 10 minutes, you get a small app very fast. It can compile and download on a companion application, or you can compile to a real uh, APK, that is a real, um, a real Android application. Now we've, we've made a Nisirum extension. Um, you load it explicitly from your computer, from your file system. You do import extension. Uh, once the uh, extension is imported, it appears here as a non-visible component, and it also appears here in the list of widgets. Most of the widgets, as you see, they are interface widgets, and this one is the one providing the ECRM functionality. Now when you switch to the programming mode, um, you see that the ECRM extension appears here, and this is some of the methods we have implemented. Um, so you can see uh, most basic one, uh, get block number, get balance, uh, the get key pair creates a secret key and public key. Uh, you can do your uh, uh, hash function, uh, get transaction status, and then the sending ether to another address. Okay, the, we work with uh, Web3j. Web3j is a, um, the Java library. Uh, they do the heavy lifting. Uh, most of our functions are 10 to 20 line and they just wrap the Web3j functions. Okay, this is how you can get started. Um, unfortunately, the MIT web server is, uh, has capacity problem uh, because it relies on the Google App Engine and the Google App Engine itself has a limitation of uh, 10 megabytes of data going out. That is, if your APK uh, file, your application is greater than 10 megabytes, uh, it's not going to work. So um, I had to modify the code of the App Inventor and uh, remove some of the limitation, uh, make it work with the App Engine library from Google, and you have to uh, make it work on your own server on or of or on your local machine. Uh, this is a 1.4 gigabyte download because it includes all the source code, all the intermediate files from the compilation and so forth. Um, no time to fix it and make it lighter. And it just requires a, a Java 8 uh, JVM. We've tested it on Windows, Linux, and uh, Apple. Uh, if you run it on your uh, local machine, then uh, the ID will appear on localhost 8888. Then you'll need the ECRM component. The ECRM component is here. 
and you'll be able to uh, import it into your project and have the Ethereum functionality. Uh, the source code is not yet here, but will be. Watch this space. Uh, there is not much. Um, and this is why uh, we suppose that this will be useful uh, as for us. Uh, most of the project, you're, you're not focused on developing this. Uh, as for us, it will be, I suppose, for you a side project, but let's cooperate on the side project and let's make it uh, grow in functionality. Uh, let's keep in touch, try it on your own, and let's make it a uh, real thing. Do we have time for questions? Yes? One minute? Three minutes. No questions? One. Uh, no, you, uh, it's not portable to Android Studio. It, do, it doesn't compile to Java. And, uh, there is a complex system inside. Uh, I believe it compiles to Scheme, which is a Lisp-like language, and there is a Scheme interpreter in the thing, something like that. I'm not a specialist uh, of this. But still, still, you get a real APK, and with the latest uh, version of the MIT, you can upload it to the, to the store. Question. Is there any chance that in the future this will be able to be used on the MIT servers, or is that possible? I don't think there is a chance. Well, it that's depend, that depends on Google, because the, the, there is a limitation. Uh, they have this uh, 10 meg uh, limitation on whatever goes out of the Google server. So uh, until they remove that, uh, there is no chance. Uh, and this is because the Web3J library and its dependencies, they, they are quite big. The, uh, the, the extension object is 10 meg itself. Yeah, well, no, but we, we, we're, uh, we are running it on a Google Compute, uh, Google Compute server or co compute engine, we're renting servers, but it's, it's, it's more expensive, you, you know the, uh, I think for, for, the MIT, for the MIT, they run it on App Engine, and because it's less expensive than running the full Java. I mean the foundational one. And, and ah, okay, yeah, yeah, we can, uh, okay, okay, so, thank you. Thank you. We'll have we have a foundation address. <laughs> That's it. Thank you.